थैंक यू हेलो हाँ
Himakan, can you hear me? Hello? Audible? Hello? Hello? Yeah, am I audible? Yeah, you're audible. Hello? Yeah, this background is uh, blurring my image. No, your voice is very low. Hello, am I audible? Hello? Just share your screen. Will you be able to present? Just check. Hello. Hello. Yeah, yeah. Voice is okay. Voice is okay. Yeah. Just uh, share. You are able to share. Huh. Is it visible? Just a minute. I also started sharing it. Yeah, show it to me. Yes, this is visible. This is visible. All it. Okay. Ah, yeah. Uh, initially, I'll be speaking. I'll be sharing my screen. And uh, mm -hmm. then you can start presenting. So uh, okay. just unshare it. OK, done. Yeah, let me share uh, shared screen. And share. his background is uh, very disturbing in the sense that it's blurring my image. Uh, okay, we'll just a this. minute. Or if we have a different one here. Yeah, so my screen is visible. Yeah, it is. All right, all right. I'll share it first, then I'll stop sharing, I'll introduce you, and then you can uh, take it forward. Okay. Okay. So, and uh, hmm. I'm not able to add the polls. Hello. others are easy to work with so in today's session we'll learn few tricks to manage tough clients uh himakant ca himakant will be the presenter for the session uh ca himakant has cleared all stages of the exams in first attempt he's also a national rank holder in cma he has worked with prestigious organizations like eny oracle and uh now he is the co-founder of him life school which is a transformational learning center so i welcome you all and himakant to the session himakant over to you thank you ruchi for the very warm introduction and i welcome all the attendees today for joining us on the weekend to know about how can we deal with difficult clients so before i proceed forward let me share the screen and i need a confirmation from all the participants that they're able to see the screen is the screen visible to all of you? Yes, it is. Thank you. Rushi, are the participants able to uh, use the message option? Sorry? Are the participants able to use the message option? Yes, chat option they are able to. Yes, yes, yes. Mm. Okay, so we could, uh, they did not respond yet. So I was just wondering. All right, guys. So I hope the slide is visible. So let's get into the agenda for the day. So we are looking into three aspects today. The first one is what exactly are the key expectations of the client? 
the reason why clients become difficult to manage is we do not understand their expectations clearly so when their expectations are not met they'll automatically create some problems so you need to get this very clearly nobody wants to get into a troublesome relation i'm talking from the client perspective even they have many obstacles to be handled in their own business normally they would like to use the work of an expert to increase their business and most importantly to make it in a seamless way so one is understanding the expectations of the clients and what exactly are the expectations we'll look into that as we proceed forward the second one is how can we convert certain challenges while we are in this practice there is a lot of difference between how the new hr accountants are practicing versus people who have started a bit early in the last couple of decades would operate either regular form so we look into three challenges which actually look like challenges but they are then opportunities we'll spend some time on that and the most important one is how do we build a long lasting relation with our clients because we cannot have this relationship in a transactional manner it has to be a long term relation where any service which they would require we should be the first go to person and for that to happen we definitely have to ensure we are solving all this problems or resolve process now i want to get responses from you in terms of what do you think is the most difficult uh, or what is the most important expectation any client would have from a cfo you can talk about your firm in general so what do you think is the most diff, uh, i would say most important expectation from the client side why would somebody come to us or what do you think is the most important expectation i need some responses here availability at any time okay nikhil what are the other things which the client might expect from us what could be the other things or you can let me know mr navin anand ji chandra vijay pragati rajesh ritesh you can let us know in your form why do they come to you why do the client come to meet you or why do they try to take your service you can let us know about your own form knowledge okay solution good what else what else could be the expectation because it is an, it is very important for us to understand the expectations and expectations are different for different clients and different form think about it timely deliverable right timely deliverables i want others to respond as well before we proceed forward i want to make it as in practice as possible what is yes this is also right knowledge is right availability is right with the deliverability is right few more responses so as you can see different clients have different expectations based on how we are positioning us if you are looking at a big four their expectation is quality and more importantly they would like to use the brand for enhancing trust if a company gets audited if the company gets the statement audited by big four it enhances their brand value also a lot of brands use it so different clients have different expectations now let us look into what are the most common ones and the most important ones number one your technical expertise or you can call it subject matter expertise let's say somebody is coming to you for incorporating a company somebody is coming to you to handle an income tax scrutiny somebody is coming to you to get an internal audit done or somebody is coming to you to ensure your building standard operating procedures for them no matter whatever the requirement is for that specific requirement it could be as simple as filing an income tax return for a salary person so depending on what they want to get done the most important thing which they would do is what exactly is your technical expertise and your subject matter strength this is exactly like we choosing a doctor based on the problem like when you have sinusitis you want to go to the best ent specialist when you have an issue with our 
I would say anything linked to dentist, we definitely want to go to the best dentist, right? So depending on the problem, we definitely want to go to the best expert. So it is important that we position ourselves and most importantly, we meet their expertise in terms of the technical expertise from the client. Okay. Next, reliability. This is a very, very, very important factor. Even sometimes, even if they understand that there is one more uh, auditor who can do a better job than you, but if you are more reliable, now what do we mean by reliability? So if a work is given to us, if some assignment is given to us, they should not worry about it at all, whether in terms of the accuracy, in terms of meeting the deadlines, in terms of meeting their expectations, and most importantly, we always understand that compliance is cheaper than penalty, right? So they expect us to take care of all the compliances within the deadlines. So once something is given to us, they should remove it out of their mind. If we can provide that comfort, if we can provide that flexibility, they'll keep coming to us. Uh, I had the privilege of working with a small firm, medium firm and big four. And also from the client's perspective, I had the fantastic opportunity to work with startups, mid-sized firms and companies as large as Oracle or ITC to know it from the client's perspective also. So reliability is very, very important. We should always position ourselves as reliable. Okay, this is the next important part. Next, confidentiality. This is probably the most important criteria for some for certain clients. I'm not saying all clients. Certain clients are very specific and very clear that they don't want to share their financial information. And even within the company or even within, within the entity, let their partner is sharing some amount of information with you. They don't even want to share that with their own teams. So please respect their confidentiality without expecting your own logic. So it is very important that we understand their need for confidentiality. And sometimes it may not be logical. Sometimes we believe that probably some set of uh, uh, details or data needs to be shared with the team. So whether they would like to do it or not, they are respecting, they're trusting us that whatever information is being shared to us, it remains confidential. Please do not share it to anyone, not even to your personal contacts, not even to people who are unrelated. You never know how it transforms and always maintain data integrity where the files or the documents remain accessible only to you and only to the teammates, only to the teammates who are involved in the project. It should not be open. Let's say there is a file lying on your table. Somebody comes in and randomly looks at it. That is not exactly how it should work. So you should you should have read necessary checks and balances where confidentiality is respected in the form of certain checks where nobody have additional access than what it is required. Next, communication. Communication. Can somebody tell me why is communication important? We always keep communicating, but can somebody tell me why exactly is communication important? So you might have noticed this trend where there are some communication gaps. So can you please let me know why communication is important. Quick response, please. Yes, communication is obvious, but what do we mean by communication here? What exactly are we looking at when we're talking about communication? So please share from your experience. I need some responses. Nikhil ji, Roshan, Sanjeev. So why do you think client communication is important? What makes you think client communication is important? Okay, uh, this is important, right? Stay in touch with the client so he feels important. Now, why am I trying to communicate to you? Let's say I'm doing a, my, my job is to take you through the slides, share you information, and that's how it is, right? But why am I trying to question you? Why am I trying to involve you? Because I genuinely want to respect you and I genuinely want to make sure that you are important to this session. So similarly, there is a lot of merit to doing what you're doing. Definitely, you are finishing your job, you're working on the deadlines, everything is going good. But when you keep them informed about the process, when something is working or when something is not working, either way, when you keep them informed, they always feel involved. Just like Nikhil has rightly mentioned that 
it feels important because it is his baby it is his job it is our responsibility to keep them uh, informed the frequency of communication the extent of communication you have to decide based on the comfort and convenience of the client let's say there is a ceo of a mnc who may not want to know everything in some cases for a startup or for an msme where they're just growing probably they would need more information okay so don't take communication for granted whether they want more or less make sure you are providing according to their needs the most important part is according to the needs and it is important for you to make yourself available availability is nothing but communication availability is not staying in the office right let's say you are available in the office that is not the thing are you available to them so initially when one of you mentioned that availability is important yes it is also part of the communication part and finally uh, apart from the technical expertise or the subject matter, they expect you to have some level of business knowledge. Let's say uh, a diary is coming to you. Now, if you're looking into the numbers, you should have a definite understanding what is an EBITDA for a regular diary industry, or what could be the gross profit ratio, what could be the net profit ratio. You should bring in some insights for a manufacturing industry who is not having an overview of the other companies or other sectors which are working in and around their core area so you should be able to provide those additional insights if you're watching shark tank let's say we're watching shark tank the reason why the sharks are able to give deep insights to the startup founders on their own company is that they are having the big picture they are having the overview so as a chartered accountant as a practicing chartered accountant you all have that expertise so when you have that expertise they definitely expect that knowledge and they definitely expect that information to be transferred to their business also. So whenever there is an opportunity, please ensure you're recommending something to them. It's not just about charging something and all of that because they should start trusting you. They should look at you like a business advisor. So you are being a virtual CFO. See if you can become a virtual CEO also because a lot of them cannot afford our high, high quality people. And with your expertise, with your general understanding of business, you can be a value addition or you can be an asset to the company. Okay. So to quickly sum up and summarize, these are the areas which you looked into. We started with the key expectations of the clients. One is the technical expertise or the subject matter expertise. The second is reliability, where trust becomes a very important factor. Confidentiality, please respect that confidentiality, whether it is logical or not, whether you are comfortable with it or not. You just he has to decide the confidentiality level. Next communication. It is important to ensure the necessary communication according to the need is done and we have to ensure it is done without taking it for granted and availability also becomes a part of the communication business knowledge over and above specific subject matter expertise they expect you to share some information linked to the business knowledge and finally cost effectiveness i'm talking about this at the last we generally think we normally think uh see some of you may not agree to this even right now I respect that, I would respect that opinion, but based on my own experience, what happens is when a client is coming to an expert, like child accountant or doctor, their most important, their most important criteria is to help or it's to take our help to solve a decision or to solve a problem. So decision making and problem solving are very, very uh, important aspects of a business on a day-to-day -day basis. So they're coming to us either to take a decision, either to solve a problem. When these two are involved, people would not think twice about the money. So when there is an urgent requirement, would you go to the best doctor or would you go to the cheapest doctor? Think about it. Think from a client perspective. When you need something, when you need something which is linked to your health, which is linked to your survival, would you go to the best doctor or the cheapest doctor? You think about it, there lies your answer. So when the business has to survive, when the business finances the lifeline of the business, when that has to happen, would a business owner go to the cheapest chartered accountant or the best chartered accountant? That explains you. And as I said, uh, when uh, Ruchi mentioned about him, Life School as a transformational company. So we help, one of the things which we do is, we help TA students clear their exams in a single attempt. Even if they have taken, I would say 10 attempts or 15 attempts, whatever it is, we'll be able to help them clear the exam in a single attempt. Initially, when we started, uh, within the first six months, a lot of people started copying our, uh, I would say, content and stuff. And, and they offered it at 10% of the cost, 5% of the cost, because they don't have to do any research. They have to simply replicate what we have to do. So one of our advisors were probably saying, 
uh, you should reduce the cost because a lot of people have come into the market. Then I said one thing. When somebody is coming to us after five or six seconds, their only requirement would be clearing their exam in the immediate attempt. Nothing else that matters. Because they already understood that how difficult or how deep is the problem. So similarly, when somebody is coming to you, they know what exactly are the challenges involved in the business. They know how difficult it is to sort out the entire financial skeleton. So please do not live in the assumption that they'll come to the cheapest guy. No, not at all. To an extent, when you when we did not establish the strategy, let's say uh, when we're just starting out, price might become the factor. But as you proceed forward, it is all about your ability to solve their problem and rest of the factors which we discussed. Okay, so this is a criteria, but effectively, this is the last thing. Now you think about why somebody is willing to pay four times or five times the regular cost of audit for a big four or some other big firm is only because of this. They still know that say ICI would not say get it to audit from the big four, right? You can get it from anyone. But the whole point is we definitely want to get it done by somebody who is maintaining that brand and quality. If you do that, we'll also be rewarded in terms of the finance also. I hope the expectations of the client are clear for you. So this is what I wanted to share with you today. Now let's talk about the second agenda point, converting challenges into opportunity. Now I want to hold here and I want to understand from you whether, whether technology is a challenge or an opportunity. You don't have to trust what I'm saying. I want to understand from you. Please let me know whether technology, we're talking about technology in whatever format, is technology a challenge or opportunity? Is technology an obstacle or opportunity? Can I get some responses? Nikhil says it's an opportunity. What about others? Both, okay. Navinji, can you explain? Navinji, why do you think technology is a challenge? You 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 mentioned it right, but I want to understand what makes you think technology is a challenge. And rest of you, it will be great if you can let me know what is your personal opinion. See, you're spending your time on a weekend, so I want to make sure this becomes very valuable to you by customizing it to your specific requirements. So Anandji, Bhagavji, Deshmukhji, all of you, Kailashji. Pragati ji, Praveen ji, Arya ji, Sanjeev ji, all of you who are just joined, Urbi ji who are just joined in. So what, why do you think and what's your take on technology? I need some responses. Why do you think technology is a challenge or an opportunity? Or what is the most important challenge which you're facing because of technology? I want your personal experience. I want both Navinji and Nikhil, uh, Nikhilji to elaborate on this. Why do you think technology is a challenge? Or why do you think it is an opportunity? Okay, fantastic. So moving ahead with tech is enabling us to process work faster and we are able to serve more clients. Fair enough. I also want the other view, like this is why we are looking at technology and opportunity. Pretty, it, it, it pretty sums up how technology can be used to make sure we work faster and serve the clients better. Yes, this part is clear. Now, from the other perspective, why could be technology or how could how can technology be an obstacle? I want your thought on that also. Somebody can let me understand why do you think technology is an obstacle? Two things cannot be resolved. It requires manual intervention. Absolutely, Navindi, you are totally right, totally right. So sometimes it requires the human thought. Technology cannot think. I know, yes, when you're talking about artificial intelligence, when you're talking about chat GPT, yes, it is totally fine. But imagine there are situations where the, it requires some manual intervention. So technology is a, I would say, necessary tool, but it is not sufficient to build everything. It is not sufficient to, I would say, solve all our challenges so both of them are right both nikhilji and navinji thank you for your responses let us see what exactly can be done in terms of converting challenges into opportunities number one when it comes to technology compared to adoption of technology by other professionals cas and doctors lack the most 
I'm including doctors because my wife is a doctor and we have around half a dozen doctors in the family. So I understand them as well as I understand child accountants. So both these professionals are not very good in embracing technology yet. I'm not talking about the new age guys who just cleared in the last two, three years. They're doing really well. Thanks to ITT orientation and all of other things where they're getting some exposure and some of them are picking things in the industrial training. All that is working well, but in general, we need to understand uh, technology is something which we have to embrace. Now, what exactly is the problem? Number one, when a child accountant in his 50s or 60s is used to work in a particular process, is used to go in a particular direction, it will be suddenly difficult for the entire firm to adopt. Adoption becomes a problem and there is a learning curve to technology because it is not something which you install. It is not about paying the software fee, but you have to go through some process of understanding how the technology works. These are the major challenges which uh, I would say firms have and some firms not think clearly about the benefits They think about the challenge and the resistance to change is generally there. So they're not very clear about the benefit. But having said that, but having said that, moving forward, the client expert expects a document to be seen in the next couple of minutes. It is important that it is important that we adhere to the requirement of the client. So what we are looking at is from now, it is no longer a question of whether we adopt technology or not. We have to, we have to. The extent of adoption, the level of, I would say automation is your choice, but definitely we all have to take one step ahead and embrace technology. There are fantastic softwares which are specifically tailor-made to meet the requirements of child accountants in practice. What I would request is before you take a decision, please go through that. Please understand the possibilities. Do not look at it as a constant. Do not look at it as a change forced upon you. Look at it as an opportunity. Today we are connecting over this platform, Zoom or Joho. When we are connecting, we are connecting from, I would say at least 15 different states or 10 different states. Now, how is it possible? Because we are all open to a new technology. This time COVID forced us onto this. Otherwise we would lose an opportunity. And in fact, we were able to build a pan India business sitting at Hyderabad, sitting from one single place, we were able to expand our services all across to India, thanks to technology. It wasn't easy. It was difficult initially for that option, but for 1% investment in technology, 10 times return. Even now I'm telling you, uh, when you invest in manpower, it's, it's kind of shaky. You have to train the person. Good people get trained and leave. Not so efficient people do not get trained properly. Either way, there are a lot of issues. Definitely, it is very hard to find the right employees for your uh, firm. If you hire 10 people, generally three people turn out to be good. And who does the work of the 10 people? But when it comes to technology, it is far more trustable. It is far more reliable. You can do repetitive process-oriented tasks through technology where the decision making is not involved. This is also free up your space, free up your time. Let's say a client asks you for some documents. Imagine you sending them with a click of a button in a minute instead of you trying to search it through hundreds of files across the table. Now, what is more efficient? It's just that you have to utilize your time on growing the firm, on meeting more clients, on helping clients take better decisions instead of getting stuck in the paperwork. Okay. So technology, my outright recommendation and my heart, I would say straightforward request to all of you is to do this. We use a lot of tech personally. So instead of uh, having a 10 member team, we are able to do the, get the work done with three people and seven tools. Like for each work, I have built a tool or I'm using an existing tool or software. So technically we are a 10 member team, but seven or 70% of the work is done through technology and technology never fails. Tomorrow my employee might call me and say that uh, I, I'm, I'm sick today. I don't have the, uh, I would say internally, this is internal. I don't feel like working. Something happened at my home. So we go through all of this, but technology would not comply. There are no issues. Technology will never bring in emotional things to do practical work. So as you 
build this solid ecosystem based on people you continue doing it additionally hire technology hire tools so that the donkey work is done by the technology all your team can focus on better work okay so this is my take on technology i hope it is received in the way i would want to uh, understand uh, and also if you have any objections on what we just discussed in the last five minutes or if you have other thoughts please let me know in the chat box i'll be happy to answer it and address it because there is a separate q and a session but before that this is a very important component so if you are in agreement with me thank you for that if you think there is some difference in terms of how we are thinking about it i will still respect your viewpoint i'm giving you a minute if you have to share something or if you have to ask something regarding what we have just discussed about technology if i'm not receiving any responses i have to make the assumption that we are on the same page and i'll proceed forward so i think all of us are on the same page that technology has to be embraced how is technology used in your office in day to day fantastic sir so this is a very good question so earlier absolutely okay so sir for this question for this question let us directly ask chat gpt so you are talking about can technology or can ai be used by a cf form right that is a question so i'm your question here i am almost using say chat uh, chat gpt has become my virtual assistant are you able to see the screen sir are you able to see something like chat gpt on the screen can i get a confirmation uh, can i get a confirmation that you are able to see chat gpt on the screen okay now you should be able to see chat gpt on the screen yes okay thank you so let's let me ask the same question how can ai are the same sentence itself can ai be used by a cf form okay this is a chat bot let's look at it no i think you are able to see it from the first yeah responding faster than me it is responding in a more precise manner in the in in just 60 seconds it has shared it now what did it ask what did it mention yes artificial intelligence can be used by a chartered accountant firm to improve its efficiency and accuracy in various tasks such as auditing financial reporting tax calculations and data analysis here are some examples of how ai can be used by a ca firm automated auditing ai powered auditing tools can analyze large amounts of financial data quickly and accurately so in terms of auditing if you find the right tool it can help you in processing the the whatever uh, invoices verification and voicing which will take days it can be done with a few hours but having said that the client also needs to have that kind of software so you can use the auditing tool but moving forward this is a great possibility next it is talking about predictive analysis so ai algorithms can be used to analyze financial data and predict future trends so this is a very important one right financial analysis is one of the important factors especially when you are going to approach banks for loans and all this uh, project finance so in in these aspects instead of having manual calculations where there could be a bias so if you use predictive analysis they'll give you far more accurate information please understand business owners would not need blind hope they need reality even the reality is 10% instead of hope says 20% they'll be happy with the truth everybody wants truth everybody wants specific prediction so if you are able to predict this for example when you are going to an astrologer we are not expecting him to say that everything is positive 
we are exporting him uh, the role of a horos uh, anyone who gives us our horoscopy is that they should be able to give us accurate information so that we will be if it's a bad thing we'll be careful so similarly when you're predicting you should not get carried away that they're expecting us to give only positive information they want accurate information so when you're using an ai based tool it will be able to give you that right prediction tax compliance automating tax calculations automating tax calculations now how it can be done probably ruchi can explain uh, using a practical way in another 10 15 minutes but when whatever take whatever you could take uh, x amount of time to do a calculation artificial intelligence can do it in minutes it will save you time and it will also reduce the errors when you're doing it see as compared to doing something in a calculator and writing in a book excel is far more accurate but still some uh, errors can be done in excel because of a manual or formula error that can also be removed where 100% accuracy can be achieved fraud detection and client communication client communication is where who would be amazed to see the possibilities once again i think ruchi uh, would be explaining further on this we'll show you some practical insights about you can utilize an software to communicate to a client on a regular basis including the confidentiality maintaining confidentiality so these are the five things which you can or a cfo can use artificial intelligence there are many more but i just wanted to give you an example using artificial intelligence how you can use artificial intelligence how many of you like the response given by this chat gpt it did not even take 60 seconds if you further ask it more clearly it will give you better answers if you like chat gpt please mention liked it please mention liked it in the chat you have to give it some credit right thank you nikhil right see it's like we just gave it 60 seconds imagine how much time it would ask let's say client asks us how can uh, i use artificial intelligence in cfo form you think about the answer it is not very easy it has given specific precise insights in no time so instead of we doing all of this it is important to know certain things from artificial intelligence which will save time okay so i hope i was able to cover this segment in a very clear manner now let us move to the next part so in terms of converting challenges into opportunities you might be wondering it is not just about uh, technology success is all about having the right people i totally agree with this technology is a tool technology is necessary but not sufficient but in terms of converting a challenge into opportunity right now talent retention is very hard it's very very hard to retain the right talent now why are we talking about it? why are we talking about this because the attrition rate is very high and i think firms are also facing a lot of issues uh, to attract practical students for uh, you know for the retention comes after attraction so when you are looking at this in order to have the right talent once again they should look at your firm like a futuristic firm if they have to work under somebody who is not embraced change who hasn't accepted technology how would they learn article six students are coming to us only for learning not for earning right so their learning has to meet their expectations so even for you to retain talent the firm has to operate in a particular way they are not bothered about the clientele entirely they are not about bothered about the size of the office those are factors which are important but definitely they are far more bothered about the kind of work the kind of exposure they are going to get in a regular ca firm so you need to understand that so talent retention becomes very very important and here also technology plays some amount of role in order to hire and attract and most importantly retain the right talent and finally there is one more aspect which we are looking to uh, as compared to i would say mbas as compared to tech guys i would say technology guys or tech firms or tech companies what lacks in finance is we don't collaborate too often we have some hesitation we always believe that every client is our client so we don't like to share information so we don't share information we don't get information so that is not really helping us to grow faster uh, this i'm sharing out of personal experience the fastest growing firms i know firms which have grew to 1 to 1.5 million dollars in 3 to 5 years yes i'm talking about 7 to 10 crore turnover in 3 to 5 years the only reason why they grew so fast is because of collaboration there is no other way even if you have the best technology even if you have the right how to talent still you need collaboration to grow faster you can go you know 
we can do only so much individually or with your own team because it might it takes a lot of time for us to convince a client and earn their trust but if somebody gives us a strong recommendation let's say uh, somebody is focusing on international taxation now because of the good quality work they get requests for internal audit now they're not going to dilute that focus so they're just giving it to you now the other way around somebody comes to you for international uh, internal audit now they have a friend who wants the service of uh, international taxation if you are also reciprocating it mutually over a period of time we'll have a great collaboration channel where you can mutually work on this okay so this is something which you could definitely explore so before we go to the next section i'm once again sharing you the top three things which you have to focus on technology you understood it you looked into the chat gpt example of how artificial intelligence can help you to solve certain things next talent talent is very important you need to Retain it. In order to retain, you have to build your form in a particular way, meeting their expectations. And next, you're talking about collaboration. Yes, not just technology, not just people. You have to leverage the work or circle or network of other firms also. And especially if somebody is working in different verticals, you're focused on audit, somebody focused on uh, taxation, client gets the single point solution to all the problems. They don't worry about who is doing it at the end of the day, as long as the work is done. So it is important you kind of do collaborations. And finally, how do you build lasting relationships? How do you build lasting relationships? Now, timeliness. I'll give you, I'll talk about timeliness using a practical example. Let's say today, when you come here, when you're starting here, there are some expectations from the session today, their expectations in terms of quality, but the first thing which should attract you, which would gain, which would uh, give you that trust is that the timeliness. If the session, Somebody says session starts at 11 o'clock, starts at 11 o'clock. The way you look at that is very different. India timeliness is not there. So it's okay. See, it's okay even if it's delayed. If it, it's okay when it's changed, it's okay when the day is delayed. That is definitely there. But the whole point is what if you are able to do everything on a particular time and in a particular time? Now, if you want to ensure all your tax audits are done by September 15th, now if you want to ensure that, it is not about the ending deadline which makes it possible. It is all about the starting deadline which makes it possible. So you need to understand if you really want to meet the deadline seriously. Now in the first year, it will be very hard because the client could not give you the information. The clients have other things to do. But you are somebody who convinced them, who promised them that you are somebody who are sticking to the timelines. They will start respecting you. They start learning from you. You need not learn not meeting deadlines from the client. Instead, the client has to learn meeting deadlines and timelines from you. The most important and fundamental criteria is your ability to do work in a specific time. Even when you're talking about exams, students will clear TA final if they're given four hours. The game is, can you complete it in three hours? Now, when you can, when you're given a task, can you complete it in the minimum possible time? So clients would start respecting your timeliness and whenever there is an important work, Whenever they have an upcoming deadline, they always come to you because you are always doing things on time. So timeliness is very important. In order to maintain timeliness, in order to maintain timeliness, you once again need to use some technology. Today, let's say we have to do this at 11 o'clock. We have to check everything from 10.30. Now, everybody might be busy. What will happen at 10, 15 itself, we got a reminder. So when you know that something has to be done once you map it to a technology, it will do it. You don't have to have your alarm. You don't have to think about it. You don't have to write it on a piece of paper. So the software which you might be using will say on this date, the deadline has this uh, written has to be filed. On this date, you need to send this communication to the client. You can automate that. When, when someone asks me, how do I do it? Earlier, I used to wake up at 6 o'clock and I used to send mails to my students in terms of how they can solve various problems. Right now, I'm scheduling them. Everything is scheduled everything is automatically scheduled for example i'll probably show you certain things here are you able to see the screen okay so if you see the time over here these are some mails which we send to our registered students so if you see the time over here, all of this, the time mentioned here, it is scheduled. It is scheduled. Earlier, I was I was specifically sending that email at a specific time. Right now, I can schedule an email 
10 days in advance, 20 days in advance, one month in advance, everything can be scheduled. So let's say 10 days before the exam, I want to send some tips about how they can clear the exam. If I'm not sure if I can send it that day, I can write the mail right now. I can schedule it. They will receive it on that. day. So this is exactly what I'm talking about. So we always have a time difference. So we cannot work on a real time basis. Uh, income tax deadline is different from our own, you know, firm deadline. In order to meet them, if you get time in advance, you can do that and you can submit or you can schedule your communication accordingly. It, it need not happen on a real time basis. Okay. So that is one advantage which you'll get by using technology when it comes to meeting timelines. Next, transparency. Uh, I would say this has got nothing to do with the technology. Uh, I would say because they should not feel that you are charging different amounts from different clients. They should never get a feeling that you are hiding something. Let's say you are helping them deal with an income tax scrutiny. The more transparent you are, the more trust they have in you. I understand. I understand what you might be feeling right now. If we are open to the client, they would not even pay 10 person. If we are directly asking them, they would not like, they don't respect our services. They don't do all of that. That might be true in the case of some clients. That might be true in the short run, but long run, you should affect their back end decision making process, not the front end. Now think about how you would trust someone. Think about how you trust someone only when somebody is keeping transparent. Truth is always transparent. When you make things transparent in the short run, it might be difficult in the long run, whatever amount you say you'll pay. Now you think about whom you trust. You think about whom you trust a contractor who gives you a very, very random or who would give you a hidden pricing model or somebody who says, this is what it is. This is the cost. This is what I want. If everything is maintained clearly, you know what it is, you know why you're paying because every person who pays for a service wants to know what component is going for uh, the standard cost and what component going for the service. They need to have the breakup clearly. So this is my recommendation. This always worked for us. This has always worked for us. Once in a while it goes for a toss. Don't worry about it in the long run. If you maintain transparency, they will never leave you. And finally, personalization. Personalization. And this is exactly. Now, if you ask me, we use technology for personalization. You, let's say, for example, instead of giving a manual schedule, I'll, I'll, I'll show you one more example. Instead of giving a manual schedule, so if you're able to see this tab, we are using this real-time feeds. So each student, for example, each student can choose whether they have done a particular chapter or not. For example, on online, like when they have to download a timetable, the timetable is same for all. So when I use this technology, let's say somebody has completed this chapter, if they select partially, the number of hours will change accordingly. If you select completely, probably need only one hour. And let's say your this chapter is entirely done. It's in red, so it might read seven, nine hours. So if you see the chapters are the same, but depending on the student's rate of completion, I'm personalizing the service. So the timetable and the schedule for student X and student Y is completely different. Similarly, I can send different content. I can send different mail content to different students. Now this has made a world of difference because when you personalize their needs and requirements, they don't want a dead timetable, which is same. They want a timetable, which is customized for them, which is meeting their own personal requirement. When you do that, yes, obviously they would like to come to you. So apart from doing what you're doing, apart from doing what you're doing for everyone, it is important that it is important that you kind of personalize, you kind of personalize uh, the service according to the requirement. If you do that, they would not get it from anyone else. They would not get it from anyone else. So that is the reason why they would never leave you. Okay. So these are the three things which you have to focus on building lasting relations, timeliness, transparency, and personalization. And I'm telling you, this will give you the option to charge premium also. If something people are willing to pay, that is for personalization. I'll give an example. If you're buying a ready-made lehenga for, for your wife or your wife, sister for somebody, when you're buying a ready-made lehenga at the time of shadi, if you go into a traditional store, like something like Mani for men and all of that, or Meba and uh, uh, Mohe for women. So if it costs 20,000, a designer is personalizing that, which might look exactly the same, they'll charge two lakhs. I'm, I'm sure all of you know this, right? So if something is done generally, it costs X, 
the same thing same material is personalized with slight level of uh, size adjustment slight level of uh, the design adjustment we can charge up to 10 times okay so personalization is something which you can use technology can be useful for personalization also so i hope the whole uh, session has given you some insights about how you can convert certain obstacles when it comes to clients so the first game thing is understanding the expectations of the clients converting the obstacles into opportunities and hard in order to maintain your relationship with a client on a recurring and long term basis if you have any questions i'll be happy to answer in the next few minutes any questions any questions based on what we have discussed okay done uh, i'll explain chart gpt before i hand over just to ruchi okay. are you able to see this okay so chart gpt is an ai based software which will compile information available from google and it will give you the right information when you search on google it's more of an advertisement google has become like uh, your just dial it gives you a random and irrelevant links here it gives you specific answers okay now can ai use by phone now let's look at one more question how can i use chat gpt to improve to improve my ca practice let us say we are asking this question we are asking about chat gpt to chat gpt itself it may or may not know the answer let's see how it responds not even 3 seconds left okay so what is it say number 1 stay up to date with the latest industry news and development this is exactly what i'm doing right right now i'm helping you to become up to date with the latest industry trends now chat gpt is the latest industry trend new technology i'm sharing it this is what it is now chat gpt itself is talking about it this is the best it can get right next get answers to technical questions now if you have any query regarding accounting tax and compliance you can ask chat gpt to give you accurate information reasonable accurate information automate or repeat to task so when you have to generate a report or when you have to draft an email when you have to send an invoice so when you are when you have to do anything it will customize an email for you it will draft an email for you it will create an invoice for you whatever you need it will help you and enhance your communication if you are not able to think about this if you are not able to write a letter write a draft clearly if you ask chat gpt it will write it for you and overall it will improve decision making as i said if you give us give it a certain amount of data it can help you to analyze the data for you so it works like the smart article it works like a smart expert which can give you accurate real time and fast information right so we can test this we can look into with this after the webinar but i want you to pay attention to this okay so uh, at this junction i would like to each and every one for your patient hearing and once again i would like to thank easy tax practice for bringing us together and they have a fantastic solution they indeed have a fantastic solution which can solve most of your issues in the practice and i request gaurav and rushi to take over now where they can help you further with the next steps in terms of helping you find the right solution thank you guys thank you himakan thanks a ton for your uh, insights on this how to deal with difficult clients and how to manage them
it's been a wonderful presentation. Uh, thanks a ton. Uh, now, uh, Himakant has rightly pointed out that technology can help in managing difficult clients or it can help resolving many of your problems. So easy tax practice is a software which is particularly designed for CA firms and it can help in automating your practice and managing your documents. When I say automating your practice, how you are dealing with your clients, how you are communicating with your clients, not only with your clients, but internally also how you're communicating with them. It is going to help you in automating all this. Apart from that, even the documents they are stored at a centralized location through easy tax practice. So if I talk about easy tax practice and CA firms, the major, major problem that a CA firm faces is that of getting data on time from the clients because they have got a lot of deadlines to meet and so many clients uh, to serve. So getting data on uh, data from clients is a big challenge. So what usually happens is that the account manager keeps calling, uh, calling the client to share data and this may irritate clients at some point of time. So through a software, you can send reminders, auto reminders are being sent to the clients to share the data. So I would not say that you don't have to follow up over calls, but yes, this is going to minimize your telephonic conversation with clients. So automatic reminders are being sent to the clients till the time you receive the data. Secondly, client has received the data, uh, you uh, client has sent you the data, but somehow he has forgotten to inform you that he has shared the data with you. And even you also missed on the mail uh, that the data has been received. So there also there may, may be time lag. So in that case, also the software helps you in getting reminders. CA team members also get reminders about yeah, uh, about the data that has been received. So this way, uh, the problem of lag, in, once the documents are being received and there is lag in getting to know if the documents are being received or not, that is also being resolved. So automatically, reminders are being sent to the client as well as to the team members regarding the data. Apart from that, when clients shares data with you, so at times they also send it on one email or another email and they may share it on WhatsApp also. So when you need a document, you have to actually search where exactly is the document. While through a cloud-based software like Easy Tax Practice, it is being sent at a centralized location. So if you know that, yes, this is my A client and I need a document from this particular client, it is there in this particular folder only, which I'll show you. Uh, then uh, there is another challenge wherein client asks certain documents again and again, maybe their uh, uh, their investment proofs or uh, some other documents like their ITR receipts, they may ask you again and again. So instead of uh, telling clients to ask you again and again for these documents, what you can do is you can tell them that this is the folder in which they have access to their documents, their important documents, and they can access it from anywhere at any time. Uh, we have a mobile app as well as a web portal for your clients also. This portal is not only for the CAs, but for the uh, clients of uh, CAs also. So they can access their documents. They can communicate to you through mobile app as well. Uh, then all this basically helps in seamless communication with the client. If the communication is seamless, uh, there are chances that, you know, even tough clients can be handled properly. Uh, they get to understand that, yes, the firm is giving due importance to us. Their time management is good and they, and they are able to answer to our queries in a better manner. Similarly, as I said that the software is also for uh, team coordination. So that is also being automated. I'll just show you how this all can be done. See, I said that documents are received at a centralized location. So they can receive the documents in three ways. One is a dedicated email ID. Another one is the mobile app and third one is the portal. So if a client shares documents with you, it is received in this centralized folder. So you know that if I need documents from this company it is there in this folder of mine you don't have to search it at multiple locations uh, then if you share some kind of documents with the client this is our web portal for the clients they know that these are the documents that have been received from my ca firm 
then auto reminders are also being sent c for, from ca parmeshwar dhakar a file a uh, client management has been uploaded so auto reminders are also being sent both to the team members of the chartered accountants as well as to uh, the clients about exchange of data then uh, this is how you can manage data through easy tax practice apart from this uh, as i said that you, you can communicate internally also in a better manner so task management see for example uh, you have received the documents from the clients and now you have passed it on to your team member uh, that you need to work on this document and send this return but somehow he missed it he missed the document he missed the work or he forgets to work on that so in that case also automatic reminders are being shared with the team members as well see here they get automatic reminders about their tasks that they are supposed to finish please share ppt i can't we can't see your ppt acha i'm so sorry i i'll just share i thought this is being shared yeah so i was talking about the challenges uh, automatic reminders are being provided instant document exchange is there through uh, the software uh, provide access to data from anywhere and at, and at any time and enhanced communication with team members as well as with the clients so i was telling you how basically the Uh, data can be shared it can be shared on a dedicated email id or web portal as well as uh, through the mobile app so this is how the this is the folder in which ca can uh, sorry the client can see all the documents similarly uh, ca can receive all the documents at this centralized location and this is the reminder that you get that this is the reminder that the file has been received so auto reminders are being sent to cas as well as to the uh, clients about receiving the data then as i told you that internally also you can manage task via uh, this software so once the task is uh, the the start date has come you automatically gets all all these reminders for example there are 100 times and you have to file there a particular return so you there are chances you may miss out on them but if the software is there telling you that this task is due so it will be easier for you to understand uh, and work on that particular task see here also we get the reminders that a task has been assigned to you this reminder uh, ca uh, team members also get as well as clients also get the reminder that some particular task has been assigned to me and finally uh, you can manage your calendar is also being prepared automatically you can manage your calendar uh, uh, or it is prepared automatically so you can check your day also that what are the pendencies for today or you can check your workload also that if you have got some additional work on which day you can uh, fix the deadline for that particular task uh, so this is how you will be able to manage your uh, clients in a better manner through technology automatic reminders are being sent your team uh, also gets reminders about the tasks that they have to perform uh, so i hope uh, it is going to help you in uh, serving your clients in a better manner uh, then we also have an initiative called easy community by easy tax practice this is a community that is being created by us wherein you can get updates about statutory changes uh, up updated compliance calendars if there are any information about the stock market which is important from ca firm point of view or there are any legal updates that also you can get so there is a link in the chat box you can click on that link and join our community easy community uh, thank you everyone uh, for your time and listening to us uh thank you everyone i hope you have got some in insights about managing clients in a better manner i on behalf of easy tax practice i thank you all and thank you himakant as well for organizing such a wonderful session thank you everyone thank you ruchi thank you for the session